Hi, my name's Kate and I am a high school math teacher in the middle of my 17th year of teaching. Today I thought that I would do a day in my life. This is a different day because it may have been hard to see in the previous clips, but we had some weather come in and we have a two hour delay today. Now, I live in Northern Indiana, so snow isn't a big issue and there's definitely not a lot of snow, but it all came down kind of all at once just before school started and it has slowly started changing over to a rainy snow mix. So the roads are just kind of a mess right now. And it's supposed to continue throughout the entire day today, turning over terrain, and then later tonight, throughout the morning, tomorrow morning, turn back into snow. So who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But I thought that I would take you guys along for a day in my life of a two-hour delay. This is our second day back from Christmas break. So the group of kids that I see today, this is their first day with me. And I only have them for an hour today rather than the 90 minutes that I would have had. So I came in, let's see, it's 8.50 right now. The kids will come in at 10.10. 10. So I've got a little while to work, but I figured I am going to try to replan things a little bit to make sure that I can get in the most important things that I want to do today. The classes that I see today are geometry. I have two of those today and I have my pre-calculus class. So I'm going to go ahead and um, turn the camera around. I'm gonna get some work done and then I will chat with you guys in a little bit. Okay, I think I at least have an initial plan figured out for what I'm going to do. So with my geometry kids, I'm gonna start by having them fill out this, my 2024 math solutions. This is a resource that TI Calculator provides um, they provided last year, they provided this year for students. So they've got fun calculators on them. They've got different ones. They've got the 30 X's, they've got the graphing calculators, um, the 84's, and they have the uh, TI Inspires. So I printed these uh, 30's for my geometry classes. And then I have, they have different colors. They have different layouts for them. So they're a lot of fun to use. And then I have the um, TI 84's for my pre-calc kids. They're gonna do that same assignment. And then when they are done with that, we are going to do an introduction to conditional and converse statements. So we have just this very boring worksheet. It's nothing exciting, nothing fancy. We're not going to get through it all. I did this with my other geometry classes and we stopped at problem number eight. That way the kids had time to work on homework in class. So I may only get through problem seven. That way the kids still have time to work on their homework in class. And then the homework, again, nothing fancy, nothing exciting. They're gonna work on this conditional and converse statements right here. So that's my plan for geometry today. My pre-calculus class is going to do those math solutions as well. So here, there's the 84 calculator that they're doing. So I've got all of those cut out for my pre-calc kids. I only have 12 kids this semester, so not a really big class. And we are gonna be reviewing special right triangles. So we're gonna do a very short lesson with that. I'm just going to remind them here are what the shortcuts are. Maybe we'll quickly remind them, okay, this is how we get those shortcuts. And then we're going to just work on the homework. The homework they have is the special right triangles color by number. And they're going to color a winter picture, so very appropriate for today. So the pictures that they have to choose from, they've got this winter hat, they have these winter gloves, and they have a little cup of hot cocoa. So I will leave a link to both this activity as well as the TI calculator math solutions thing in the description below. I don't have the converse and conditional statements available. It's something that I created years ago, not something that I have up on TPT. Um, so, but I will link anything else that I use that I can in the description below. I'm gonna keep working on getting all the supplies that I need, making sure that I'm ready for the kids today. Okay. 
with the extra time that I had. Really excited I was able to get some copies made for later this week. So first stack of copies that I made for my geometry class, we are working on, after we do our conditional and converse statements today, we're going to be looking at congruent triangles. So I found online, and again, I'll link this in the description below, um, but an activity to introduce the similar, the congruent triangles called seven savory sandwiches. And it was really cool. I did it last year and my students seemed to enjoy it. It was a little bit difficult because they had to use protractors and rulers and measure angles and draw lines and all of that but it was still a lot of fun so I'm going to do that this year again so I've got all of my papers copied and ready to go for that for tomorrow and Thursday and I also copied my January class pack from Callie Danielle and if you guys are not familiar Callie Danielle has a lot of really cute teacher stuff. She's got a lot of really cute other stuff too, but she's got a lot of really cute teacher things. And the class pack is a digital bulletin board kit. So you can see over here, I will, after this clip, I'll show you guys that one closer. So that was the one from December. So the December one was a January theme. So the January class pack is a February theme. It is super cute. Um, so here's some of the borders. There's some of the other borders. So it typically comes with three borders. It comes with a bunch of other stuff. So Valentine theme. So I got all of that stuff printed out, got my letters so that I can put up a phrase and I'm going to work on over the next couple of days getting that stuff cut out. Unfortunately, right now it looks like our laminator is broken. So I will have to wait a while to get these laminated. Thankfully, it's just the beginning of January and I don't need it up till February. So I'm a little bit ahead, but yay, two hour delay. Here is the class pack that I had from December, so my January one in my math era. So she gives you all the letters in two different colors so you can spell out whatever you want, and I just chose to put in my math era. So I'm trying to put a mathy pun in there somewhere as much as I can just because my students know that I like really corny jokes, hence the math solutions and all of that. So this was that one. If you guys like this, it is available for purchase. I will leave the link below for Callie Danielle's site. She's got, again, some amazing stuff, so you guys should check her out. It's about 10.05. Kids come in in about five minutes, so I'm going to get my projector turned on and just get ready for my first group of kids. I always have a set of slides up for my students when they walk in the room so the do now information just lets them know what they need to do so today just find a seat grab a pencil and normally it's turning in your phone and swapping that out for your calculator turning in homework and then the supplies we need i have our i can statement on the bottom there i can write conditional and converse statements today is very similar to the i can statements however you know i'll list other things like our math solutions that we're doing and then our meme of the day I know that all teachers, all students can relate to that meme right there. So I am ready. I've got on my front table, I have the math solutions out first because that's what we're going to start with. And then I have my stack of classwork and homework. This semester I have hall duty in the morning. So once the kids come in, I need to go stand out in one of the hallways and just make sure that kids have IDs on, hoods off, and just, you know, aren't goofing around too much. So I'm gonna go out, do that soon, and then get my first class, which is geometry started. We can find the easy things first. So what is our angle T gonna be? 45. So we know that we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. The difference is now I'm giving you the hypotenuse rather than giving you one of the legs. So we have to work backwards. How would I have gone from my hypotenuse here back to the leg? What did, mathematically, what would we do? Okay, unmathematically, what do we do? What happens if I go from here back to there? What does it look like just happens? Yeah, we're taking away the square root of 2, right? So mathematically, how do I take away a square root of 2? We have two different ways. No, not square. That's another good guess, though. Divide, right? If I divide this by the square root of 2, what's going to happen to my square root of 2s? They're going to go away, and that'll give me my 5. So when I'm going forward, when I'm going from my... I can't talk and think today. I think I lost that ability on the break. When I'm going from the leg to the hypotenuse, I'm multiplying by the square root of two. 
But when I'm going from the hypotenuse back to the leg, we have to do the opposite. So we have to divide by the square root of two. Okay. So in order to go from here, let's just put that <coughs> in order to go here, I need to take this and I need to divide by the square root of two. Okay. So these are a little bit more difficult. So to divide by the square root of two, so my A is going to be 12 divided by the square root of two. So this takes us back to, you know, first semester that we all hated. That's okay. Can't have our square root in the bottom. So how do we get rid of that square root from the bottom? By square root of two. Good. So multiply both the numerator and denominator, both the top and the bottom, by the square root of two. So on the top, that's going to give us 12 square root of 2. On the bottom, what is that going to give us? 2. The 2. So 12 square root of 2 over 2. And then we have to simplify. Remember, we can only divide by the things that are outside with things that are outside. So I can simplify my 12 over my 2. So what is 12 divided by 2? 6. 6. So my answer would be 6 square root of 2. My first two classes of the day are done. I am now on my plan period, which is also attached to lunch. So because normally when I have a class during the lunch block, I have class for the 90 minutes and then lunch. So I do try to take lunch at the same time. However, it is 1250 right now. I am starving. So I may eat lunch and work at the same time. Um, geometry went pretty well. Having a shorter class, I just shortened how much we did with the conditional and converse. My pre-calc kids, we talk just about the special right triangles. Normally I do a quizzes just to have the kids practice that. And then we do a quick review of the basic sine, cosine, tangent functions. We also do that tomorrow or the next lesson along with talking about the um, cotangent, cosecant, and secant. So I figure I'm just going to do all of those on a Thursday and I should have enough time because it's another short lesson. So after we did the special right triangles, my kids had about 20 minutes to work on the homework, that color by number activity. They work really well. They love to work and help each other. They ask questions. So it's just a fantastic class. While they were working on that, in between answering questions, I was able to get some of the math solutions hung up on one of the bulletin boards. I love how it turned out. And I think I'm going to take the other ones and hang them. We have six huge bulletin boards in our hallway. And I seem to be the only one, myself and the other math teachers, seem to be the only ones that use those. So I'm going to take down some of my older work and I may put up the rest of the math solutions up there just to have them all up and out so that, you know, people can see them. So here's the Mathilutions bulletin board that I got done. I love how it turns out. It's really cute. So these ones are for my pre-calc kids. And then down here are some of my algebra kids or my, sorry, my geometry kids or my quantitative reasoning kids. So again, love how this bulletin board turned out. It's really fun, especially next to my In My Math era. guys just saw me filling up pencil boxes I would say that one of my most used and the best suggestions if you use a lot of supplies in your class is to get pencil boxes I have them numbered I used my Cricut Joy to number them but before I got that I just used a like paint pen type thing to number these you could just you know use a sharpie you could you know cut out paper, whatever, you could number them. That corresponds to my team number so that my students know which box to pick. It also helps me know that if I'm missing supplies, who to talk to, or if I find random supplies on the floor around a team, I know which box that they go into. So inside the box, these are the supplies that my students are gonna need for this seven savory sandwiches activity. So I've got the scissors, I've got protractors, I've got tape. They are gonna need uh, rulers as well, but they need the big 12 inch rulers. So obviously they're not gonna fit in this box. So I'll just have my big box of rulers out so that the students can grab the rulers that they need. Um, the other thing that I absolutely love 
is I have a ton of these Sterilite like shoe boxes that I store all of my supplies in. You guys saw me in my cupboards getting some of those out in that last clip, uh, but I do have those labeled. So these were labeled when I was in my original classroom where my pencil box or my boxes fit in my cupboards this way instead because they were super narrow. Uh, so I know I need to label them on this side, but at this point I can see what's in them and I really just know where they're stored. So it's fine. Eventually, sure, will I use my Cricut and label the sides? I'm sure eventually when I you know have free time but anyway I would strongly recommend if you use lots of supplies sterilite containers to keep all of them in pencil boxes to help students grab what they need so that you are sure you get your stuff back okay next thing that we're gonna do before we get into the math stuff we are going to set math solutions okay. math solutions they are like resolutions but they're so much cooler because they're about math and right nothing's cooler than math right Kelly mm-hmm mm -hmm. So, what is a New Year's resolution, right? That's when you usually hear resolutions. What is that? A goal, right? Like, my New Year's resolution, okay, it's not actually, but, you know, most people, I'm going to start working out five times a week, and, you know, by January 1st at noon, you're like, never mind, I'm not going to do that, right? You know, you set all these big goals, and then sometimes they work, and sometimes you just forget about them within a week or two. We are going to set a math goal. But we're going to keep coming back to it to see, hey, how are you doing with this? What do you need help with? This was your goal. What can I do to help you guys make sure that you achieve that? So when you're setting these goals, you need to think about realistic goals, right? If you failed first semester and you struggle in math, is a realistic goal getting an A? No. Maybe a realistic goal is getting a D. Okay? If you got a D, maybe a realistic goal is, hey, I want to get a C. Okay? Or if you didn't ever really do your homework, maybe your goal is, I want to do half of the homework assignments. Think of something realistic, something attainable, something small. Again, not, hey, I want to go from zero to 100, but how can I go and do these really small steps? And with that, my day is over. So two hour delay today, I don't know, sometimes they feel really hectic, but today really didn't seem that bad. I think still having our classes, our long classes helps was still able to get everything in. I think the only class that I had to cut some stuff was my pre-count class, but I'm gonna be able to fit that in Thursday. So it is 3.48, I need to stay until four. So just, you know, 15 minutes getting my room picked up, making sure that I have everything set for tomorrow. The rain that we have right now is supposed to change back over to snow sometime tonight, tomorrow morning. So who knows if we have a two hour delay tomorrow. I just wanna make sure I have everything set before I leave. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in following along more with my journey of teaching high school, please subscribe. I do upload videos every Friday, so hit that notification bell to be notified the next time my video goes live, and I will catch you all later. Bye.